Okay, we're live. Good evening, everyone. I would like to call the September 13th, 2021 meeting of the University City City Council to order at 634. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilman Clay. Present. Councilman Klein. Here. Councilmember McMahon. Here. Councilmember Hills. Here. Councilmember Kuse. Here. Councilmember Smotherson. Here. Mayor Crow. Here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before you, you have the agenda as presented. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve by Ms. Klein, seconded by Mr. Hales. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, before you, you have the minutes of the August 9th study session regarding policing strategy. Is there a motion to approve? Motion made by Mr. Hale, seconded by Mr. McMahon. Is there a discussion? Mr. Cusick, do you have a discussion? Or is that a second? Okay, thank you. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. You now have before you the August 9th regular session minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Motion made by Mr. Clay. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Klein. Is there a discussion? Hearing that all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. You now have before you a very, very long list of 14 appointments. Uh, so I believe if Mr. Clay will take uh, his mute off. I will turn the first two appointments over to Mr. Clay. Uh, yeah, and I need to take them singularly, correct? Yes, yes you um, do. All right. Uh, I'd like to uh, nominate Mark Barnes uh, for the uh, library board as a replacement for uh, Dorothy Davis's vacated seat. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Klein. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Clay. Uh, I would also like to dominate uh, Kathleen Simpson to the library board um, as a fill-in replacement for Michael Hart's vacated seat. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Hales. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Ms. Klein. I would like to nominate Diane Benjamin for reappointment to the Urban Forestry Commission. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Hales. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Ms. Klein. I would like to nominate Ed Nichols for reappointment to the Historic Preservation Commission. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. McMahon. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Ms. Klein. I would like to nominate Robert Clark for the appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Hales. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Smotherson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Crow. I'd like to nominate Rick Rupert is uh, to the Calip to, for reappointment to the Calip Commission. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. McMahon. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Smotherson. I'd like to nominate uh, for reappointment Gene Russell to the Calip Commission. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. McMahon. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We are halfway there. Mr. Cusick. Thank you, Mayor Crow. I would like to nominate Aaron Bitzer to uh, the Urban Forestry Commission. Is there a second? 
Stated by Mr. Smotherson. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Cusick. Thank you, Mayor Crow. I'd like to nominate Bethany Gasparovic to the Civil Service Board as a fill-in, replacing Joan Suarez's vacated seat. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Smotherson. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Hales. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to nominate Matthew Emden to the Green Practices Commission as a fill-in replacing Tim Dugan's unexpired term. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. McMahon. Discussion? Hearing that all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Hales. I would like to nominate Meg Zelenovich to the Arts and Letters Commission uh, as a fill-in replacing Barb Santoro's expired term. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Smotherson. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Hales. Thank you. I'd like to nominate Christopher Trahan to the Historic Preservation Commission replacing Sandy Jacobson's expired term. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Klein. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I would like to nominate Larry Zelinovich to the Traffic Commission replacing Jeffrey Mishkin. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Hales. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, opposed? The ayes have. The last one, I would like to nominate Todd Jacob to the Board of Appeals, uh, replacing Greg Pace. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Hales. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I think, uh, Ms. Reese, we may have set a record tonight. Uh, thank you for helping us move through some of those uh, appointments and reappointments. Uh, to all of our citizens uh, who made citizen comments uh, for tonight's meeting, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Reese provided all written comments to us uh, earlier today, so all members of council have had the comments um, shared with us, so we appreciate that. I will now move forward with the public hearing for Three Diamond Development Senior Apartments. Uh, I will open this public hearing at 6.42 p.m. And any public comments have already been received. I will close this public hearing at 6.42 p.m. for the senior, uh, excuse me, Three Diamond Development Senior Apartments at 1301 to 1309 Partridge Avenue. Next, you have a very large, uh, long consent agenda, uh, items I-1 through 15. Uh, hopefully everyone's had a chance to read through those items. Uh, I took a good chunk of this afternoon and read through them. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion made by Mr. Cusick. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Clay. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Rose. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, this first item up under J, the City Manager's Report, J1 is a conditional use permit application for a convenience store slash gas station quick trip at 7579 Olive Boulevard. I believe we have Mr. Cross online to uh, present this item. Uh, before uh, Mr. Cross uh, presents, can I have a motion to approve? Motion made by Mr. Smotherson, seconded by Mr. Hales. Uh, no surprise in either of those two gentlemen on their uh, motions. Uh, uh, is I'm Mr. Here. Cross going to speak yeah, or is he going to be answering questions? Uh, I can do either one, but Mr. Rose, good evening to everyone and thank you, Mr. Rose and Honorable Mayor Crow, and good evening to the council. And Mr. Rose touched on it. This is a conditional use permit that's required per the zoning ordinance and specifically section 400 of the code. 
uh, for a convenience store slash gas station. If you look at the zoning ordinance, both of these uses are identified as being required to have a conditional use permit uh, per the code, both the gas station and the convenience store operations. And we took this before the plan commission because this proposed use has components of both. And therefore we determined that it was similar in nature and therefore eligible to go through the conditional use permit process. And as you know, the CUP process is in place to ensure that those uses that are similar in nature to permit uses within underlying zoning districts, um, but may potentially have a little bit of a different element to them. Um, they are then um, recommended to go before the plan commission, ultimately city council via the CUP process to ensure that there are no detrimental impacts to the surrounding properties. So uh, staff uh, determined that this was the process that needed to be followed to uh, uh, look at this request. So we took it before the plan commission during their August 26, 2021 uh, meeting um, and took in the, conducted the public hearing component of the process. And ultimately during that meeting, the plan commission recommended approval of the request by a 5-0 vote, uh, subject to the three conditions that were identified in the transmittal letter. And those are that there would be an approved lighting plan approved as part of the permitting process. So in other words, staff would review that as part of the permit to make sure that there is no light pollution that goes outside the boundaries of the property and affects the uh, properties, and I, specifically the properties to the north, the residential to the north. So that was a recommendation of approval. Uh, that the traffic uh, commission also complete a review, which that took place last week. And my understanding is it was determined there were no detrimental impacts based on the traffic. And that makes sense uh, because when you look at convenience stores, they're, they're traditionally not destination sources, uh, but what they are are uh, convenience sources along a, a route that's already traveled. So um, they determined there was no detrimental impact to uh, the traffic patterns and there was no change in the level of service. And that the third condition would be that there would be a lot consolidation completed prior to the building permit approval uh, in the future. So based upon that, during their August 26 plan commission minute, meeting, they the approval of the request and I would be happy to address any questions that you have. Uh, Mr. Smotherson. Thank you, Mayor Crow. Uh, Mr. Cross, um, just a quick question and a request. And, and, and that is, I know that the Planning Commission approved a six foot fence, but is there a way that as a council, we can request that it be an eight foot fence? Because I do know that watching the meeting that um, the Quick Trip rep representative didn't have a problem with either one. And, yes. uh, and, and I'd like to suggest that, uh, and if you could explain to me or let me know what process needs to happen, I don't wanna necessarily have to go back to planning, but if that could be in fact an eight foot fence, I'll give you two reasons. One being the lighting and we'll make sure that that lighting doesn't affect the neighbors, uh, the housing in the back, but also there's a travel path that um, some residents illegally take, meaning they cut through this guy's yard and I've seen it, literally climb up on his uh, picnic table and jump over the fence. And I just wanna make that as difficult as possible so we don't have that problem, if you understand what I'm saying. No, no absolutely. And um, bear in mind that anything that comes to you from the planning commission is a recommendation. And if you recall during my PowerPoint to the plan commission, um, their options are they can actually um, recommend approval, they can recommend a denial, they can recommend approval with conditions, which is what they did. But ultimately, um, long story short, they've made a recommendation to you and you as a council have that option to amend that uh, recommendation and make that part of, your, part of your formal approval. So the answer is yes. And um, Ms. Keene, who represented Quick Trip, um, they were not opposed to the eight foot fence. That was actually talked about, but they were talking about the establishment of the landscaping on the other side of the fence. And one of the concerns that came up was, well, how long is that gonna take for that to become established and come into effect in terms of the trees? So um, they were not opposed to it. And I don't think they'd be opposed to it if that is ultimately part of your final uh, action to require that that be an eight foot fence. And uh, if, if you're gonna do it, 
now is the time to do it. Uh, so it's documented as part of the minutes and part of the record. So short answer is yes, you can, you can amend that. So is that, does that require a motion that we amend the um, Planning Commission's um, CUP recommendation and that we amend that to be an eight foot fence? Well, in your recommendation um, or any motion you make, you, you most likely would want to recommend acceptance of the Planning Commission's recommendation and add the eight foot fence requirement to that formal motion that you make tonight before. Dinner. And I'm adding that formal motion to, to my, uh, a formal in notice to my motion, if that's okay, yeah. if that's understood. Yeah. Mr. Clay, was that a second? It was, and, and we did receive something in the chat, Mayor. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to to convey things that are in the chat since we really don't okay. allow public comments. Uh, and yes. so, though I though I appreciate the information being received, um, and if so, if if John tells me otherwise, I, I'm I'm happy to repeat it. But I, I think that I think we're opening Understood. up a door that we don't want to open up uh, with public comments. So I just think that we uh, yeah uh, we recognize we recognize the the message was sent. Uh, so we have but we have on the floor. We have, we have on the floor a, a, a motion to amend. So if we, have, we have a motion and a second. So before we go to anything else, are there questions about the motion to amend? Well, I, can I make a motion to approve and amend? Is that okay? Well, I, I think we need to, I think we, I, my thought is that we need to make a motion to, uh, we need to take it. You, you made a motion to. Sure, that's okay, that's fine. To amend. To, to take it to eight feet. Yes. So, John, am I in the ballpark, or, or did, did, he, did he make a complete motion? Uh, yeah, I, I think that for, for the record, uh, if I understand the motion, it's it's to um, approve the conditional use permit with the recommendations listed in the staff report, and in addition, uh, the eight foot fence. So we did all in one fell swoop. Yes. Okay, so we have so we have we have the entire bill, if you will, before it's continued for discussion. I, the reason I say that is because I got Mr. Hales with his hand up, and I'm not sure what 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 he wants to talk about. Well, I, well, now I'm a, a bit bit confused. Are we going to be taking? Are we still talking about the amended the motion to amend? No, we're going to talk right now. That was the it's the, it's the entire the entire CUP. Okay. Um, well, just on on the fence. Uh, I, I wanted to reiterate from the, the meeting what's been said that, yeah, they were um, absolutely okay with the eight foot fence, but I also want to add it was, it was the eight foot fence or a six foot fence, whether it's eight feet or six feet, it doesn't change the landscaping plan for, for trees and to create a, a green space um, to the, particularly to the North. And then, you know, there's, there's often a lot of concern about um, uh, stormwater runoff and, uh, I was wondering if Mr. Cross could uh, maybe tell us just a little bit about the uh, retention basin that, that is part of this plan, because it, it does look quite large. Well, when you look at it, I mean, obviously it's designed to meet the requirements to reduce stormwater runoff and the intent. Uh, well, I think one of the one of the benefits of this is this it's going to it's going to serve twofold. It's going to meet the requirements, but it's actually most likely going to reduce any floodplain or any runoff issues that currently exist on the property. So I think the purpose of the retention pond was to not only meet that, but address any potential concerns of any um, additional runoff that, that could be created by, by any floodplain. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the Conditional use permit for 7579 Olive. Hearing none, before you, you have an amended report from the uh, plan commission for this property now with an eight foot fence. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Rose. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, item J2 is a conditional use permit application uh, to establish and operate a proposed place of worship at 8350 Delmar Boulevard. And Mr. Cross will be presenting this item. 
Uh, thank you again. Before Mr. Cross speaks, could we have a motion to motion on the floor, please? Motion by Mr. Hale, seconded by Mr. Clay. Mr. Cross. Thank you, Mayor Crow, and thank you, City Manager Rose, and good evening again. Uh, so, as Mr. Rose had indicated, this is a conditional use permit um, to establish a place of worship at the property commonly known as 6350 Delmar Boulevard. And I don't think there's any secret what's there. That's a Tivoli building. But part of the process of them moving forward with, with establishing that as one of those uses is that a place of worship, and even though places of worship are identified as permitted uses by right, in the core commercial zoning district, we have a supplementary regulation that requires any non-retail businesses that are established along that stretch of Del Mar in the core commercial district, they must go through the conditional use permit process, which is why they've had to come before you tonight. So they made their formal request to, uh, to seek the conditional use permit and they, they appeared before the planning commission way back on May 26th. And the planning commission recommended approval of the um, uh, conditional use permit for the place of worship uh, by a 6-0 vote. They also uh, made that recommendation of approval based on the following conditions that were identified in, your, in the transmittal letter. And those three conditions are that they obtain site plan approval prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Now, one of the things with site plan approvals, those are basically built in to the uh, CUP per permit process. And you're gonna have another action that's gonna come here in a bit for the uh, second and third reading for the final plat approval, which in a sense is a site plan approval. So that one's been addressed or will be addressed as part of the uh, uh, action here in a bit. Uh, and then also the key one um, was that they were allowed to reduce the required number of parking spaces to 55 spaces contingent upon an agreement with the city. And that's an action that you've already taken as part of the consent agenda in that you approved a parking agreement with the, with the church um, to utilize parking spaces, uh, city parking spaces within public parking areas. <laughs> and then the third condition was that the existing uses on the property would continue as part of the CUP. So the purpose of that was to make sure that some of the other retail uses that were there that may not have the required parking basically continue and have been identified as what we call a legal non-conforming use. So if they change out from like Bob's shoe store to Fred's shoe store, they're covered on the continuance of that non-conforming use. So based upon those three conditions, the Planning Commission back on May 26th recommended approval of the CUP. And that's why we're bringing it here before you tonight for final action on the request. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Mr. Cusick. Thank you, Mayor Crow. I'm um, somewhat confused. My uh, agenda item shows that this J2 conditional use permit based on worship is for 8350 Omar. That is correct. I, I'm sorry, you said 83? That's 83. what my agenda says, 83 Del Mar. Is that uh, a typo? Yeah, I think that's a typo, but it should be 6350. Good catch, Mr. Cusick. Very good catch. I, we apologize to uh, everyone. We will uh, uh, understand that we have a Scribner's error on the agenda for... The uh, address being 6350, not 8350. The, the, the one thing I would like to note, and it's always probably the most important thing when it comes to CUPs, one of the unique things is the public hearing takes place at the plan commission level as opposed to the city council level. So we did notice um, all the required property owners within 185 feet. Uh, we also um, did do courtesy mailings uh, property owners within 500 feet, and there was a significant amount of support for the uh, request. But um, just to make sure that I clarify that from a legal standpoint on the public notices, it was done for the 63 to meet the requirements of the code. Are there any additional, uh, Mr. Cusick, yes. Yes, sir, I had a follow-up question. So the um, 
to establish this as a place of worship for the 6350 Delmar building, is that going to mean that the whole building will be utilized for this? Uh, the whole, uh, as there's only one address and there's not any floors or suites or anything like that mentioned, is the, the, the complete building there, including the theater and all the other businesses that are in there, will, what's the breakdown um, going to be? So the breakdown is actually, and that's why that was condition one, the breakdown would in a sense be based on the site plan approval. And if you look at the final plat, it's a little bit unique because most final plats, people assume they're associated with the green earth, so to speak, where you start to cut up lots. But our subdivision regulations require that any condominium development follow the final plat process. So if you look at that final plat, each of the suites and the uses are subdivided, so to speak, basically vertically as opposed to horizontally. Uh, but they are subdivided and, and defined in that final plat. And that's why that was a condition that was incorporated into the recommendation. So my concern would be that is is the the whole I'm still confused, Mr. Cross. I apologize. Which portion of that building would be designated as a place of worship? Uh, primarily, um, so they they do a they've got their offices that are identified in primary primarily the 6350 and the theater area would also be utilized as part of the place of worship. It's primarily to accommodate the Sunday church services along with, if I recall, they were gonna have some Wednesday services as well. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Cross? Hearing none, all those in favor of the CUP for 6350 Del Mar, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We'll now move forward with unfinished business. Bill number 9441. May we have the second reading? Bill 9441, ordinance amending section 115.270 of the University City Municipal Code relating to parks and recreational facilities designated so as to change the name of Kingsland Park to Welch Park. May we have the third reading? Bill 9441, an ordinance amending section 115.270 of the University City Municipal Code relating to parks and recreational facilities designated so as to change the name of Kingsland Park to Welch Park. Is there a motion to approve? Motion made by Mr. Clay. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Smotherson. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Klein. Aye. Councilmember McMahon. Aye. Councilmember Hales. Aye. Councilmember Kusick. Aye. Councilmember Smotherson. Aye. Councilmember Clay. Aye. Mayor Pro. Aye. The ayes have it. Now we'll go to bill number 9442. And we have the second reading. Bill 9442, an ordinance approving a final plat for a major subdivision of a tract of land to be known as Tivoli Building Condominium. We have the third reading. Bill 9442, an ordinance approving a final plat for a major subdivision of a tract of land to be known as Tivoli Building Condominium. Is there a motion to approve? Motion made by Mr. Hale, seconded by Mr. McMahon. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilmember McMahon. Aye. Councilmember Hales. Aye. Councilmember Kosick. Aye. Councilmember Smotherson. Aye. Councilmember Clay. Aye. Councilmember Klein. Aye. Mayor Pro. Aye. The bill is passed. Now we'll do bill number 9443. May we have the second reading? Bill 9443, an ordinance approving a final plat for a major subdivision, a tract of land to be known as 801 Smockmore Lane Consolidation Plat. May we have the third reading? 
Bill 9443, an ordinance approving a final plat for a major subdivision or track of land to be known as 801 Smockmore Lane Consolidation Plat. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Motion made by Mr. Cusick, seconded by Ms. Klein. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Hills? Aye. Councilmember Cusi? Aye. Councilmember Smotherson? Aye. Councilmember Clay? Aye. Councilmember Klein? Aye. Councilmember McMahon? Aye. Mayor Crow? Aye. The bill is passed. Thank you very much. We'll now move to new business. Resolution number 2021. 13 budget amendment number four. Is there a motion to approve? Motion made by Mr. Smotherson. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hales. Uh, Mr. Rose, is there anything you'd like to uh, bring forth or answer any questions of any colleagues? Honorable Mayor and Council Members, I can respond to any questions that you might have. We also have Keith Cole that is available as well, mm -hmm. our finance director. Are there any questions regarding buzz, uh, excuse me, uh, budget amendment number four? Hearing none, all those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Now we have bill number 9444. Who would like to introduce? Mr. Smotherson. Ms. Reese, would you please have the first reading? Bill 9444. An ordinance amending section 210.040 of the University City Municipal Code relating to keeping more than two animals under certain conditions unlawful by repealing section 210.040 and enacting in lieu therefore a new section to be known as section 210.40, keeping more than three animals under certain conditions unlawful, containing a savings clause and providing a penalty. Thank you very much. We'll now move forward into council reports and business. Does anyone have a uh, report? Uh, Mr. Clay. Um, I, I will state that the uh, library is, and I had it in front of me and I've misplaced it, forgive me, but I believe the library is, is stated to, uh, slated to move um, to its temporary facility um, so it can undergo renovations and not to put the city manager on the spot or any of his team. Do you happen to know when that is in fact happening? I had it in front of me and, and it's lost in a sea of papers. I don't remember, Council Member Clay, I don't have that information in front of me, uh, but we can provide that information and place it on our website uh, if it's not already there tomorrow. I think Thank you. The that, is, that is imminent. Yeah, I think the library already has put out a, a notice on Facebook and on um, uh, next door as well. I just can't, I, I can't remember it either. Right off the top of my head. Yep. Any uh, other questions or comments regarding uh, council reports and business? Uh, we have no further citizen participation. Are there council comments this evening? I'm just Klein. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to take a minute to commend the school district, um, all the, the superintendent, the school board, the, the employees, and everybody for bringing our students back full time in person. I think they've done a fantastic job in following recommendations and keeping our students safe. And I have two kids in the school district and everything's going smoothly so far. So I just uh, wanted to recognize the outstanding job that they did. Absolutely. Mr. Smotherson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Crow. I just wanted to actually, um, and I didn't get a chance to do this earlier, but um, if, well, I'll go ahead and just say it this way. Um, there was a lot of chatter on next door about the third ward. And uh, one of the specific items I wanted to address is the issue with 7449 Wayne. And what I will actually like to say is that I wanted to let people know publicly that I had actually reported that before that next door post ever came out. But what I will actually say, and I wanna say this to, to let everybody know, that is that when I saw that property, that when I reported that, because we had reported that months ago, 
uh, when I saw that property and the condition that it was in, I was furious. I was absolutely furious. Now, I want to explain my anger and my anger was not at the city manager. My anger was not at our inspectors, believe it or not. It wasn't. I even met Tim Cusick on the street and he was mad. But what I want to actually say to everybody is that, and, and I'm hoping to work with Council Member Clay, and, and we've mentioned this before. What, what amazes me and what infuriates me is that these owners give no care at all about the condition of these properties. And that's something I would really like to address in the future and very soon. Um, how we address vacant properties, that there needs to be some specific uh, tool or, or avenue to address vacant properties because these owners don't seem afraid. And I want you city to have a reputation that they should be, and, and, I, and I hate to say it this way, but they should be afraid to leave their property or not pay attention to their property. We've been dealing with this for years. Mr. Rose understands this um, because one of the first properties I showed him when he first got hired is still an issue, even today. So I, I really want to let people know that, that those issues had been reported by this council and myself before it even showed up on next door. So again, I'd ask the public to give us a call if there's a problem, if there's an issue, Next door is not the way to solve it, and it didn't solve this problem. So that's my comment for tonight. Thank you. Uh, someone else, Mr. Cusick. Thank you, Mayor Crow. Um, Mr. Smotherson, I believe you meant to say Mr. Tim Scott instead of Tim Cusick met you on the street there? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Tim Scott. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clay. I did get the information regarding the library. Um, it's the last day of operation. Its traditional location is on uh, the 20th. Um, I and I believe it's moving in uh, at the new location, 6900 Del Mar on the 24th. Yep. Any other comments, Mr. Hales? Thank you. I, I do want to echo what uh, Mr. Smotherson just said about contacting the city when there's a problem. It, it's uh, when there's property maintenance issues. To, to me, it's it's uh, very similar to I think what the police would would tell everyone, which is if you see something, say something. Um, it, it gets very hard to go searching through social media to try to find a property that uh, and Boyne and I talked about this. Uh, that week, I too went over there and uh, talked to the city manager that, that day about it. And I was very pleased that uh, the city manager and, and, and Director Cross uh, did have that resolved within uh, 24 hours, at least of my figuring out where, where the issue was. Um, but, but it really is, is important that people do reach out and, and we all get... Uh, emails and, and phone calls when there's a problem from people, whether it's a pothole or a tree limb down, uh, where it is um, and th that it, what the nature of the problem is. And uh, from my experience, uh, those, those issues have been resolved uh, fairly quickly. I will say problem properties that, that are not being maintained, uh, you know, they're in the first ward as well. Um, and, and they're, you know, we all know where they are and, and getting the owners to be responsive uh, is a challenge. But I will say that, you know, for a very long time, I believe the city really didn't aggressively uh, pursue the worst of the properties and going through uh, a condemnation process and, and, and even going to the extent of, of uh, demolition of unsafe, seeking that demolition of unsafe structures. And uh, I can tell you that I know of uh, at least three or four, and I'm sure there are others, where that action that the city has taken over the last three years has resulted in those owners uh, taking action, um, whether it be making improvements to the property or in some cases, um, 
two cases I, I know selling the property uh, and, and both of those that uh, I speak of are both being rehab. So, you know, proactive enforcement, I just think is, is so important. And I know that that's been our focus as a council. We've talked about it uh, going back through our, our all day council work sessions or retreats. Um, and I, I just, I, I want to, to stay on this, this trajectory that uh, Director Cross has, has uh, laid out for us. Um, with with continuing and keeping that keeping that up and and uh, I, I think it will it will make a difference. But it took a very long time uh, to to get to, to where things are today. So I, I'm optimistic. It's going to take time, and I appreciate um, all of the work of the inspectors. And you know, I I sent in a complaint over the weekend on two properties, and you know they were very responsive. Um, the city was very responsive in reaching out to those those property owners who they do have contact information in that case. So um, thank you again to all the inspectors and to to, to Cliff and uh, to the city manager for, for their efforts. Anyone else? I do want to uh, acknowledge uh, the, the loop in motion that we had this uh, Saturday and Sunday. We had uh, lots of folks in the loop. Uh, I think a nice time had by all. I also want to extend my appreciation to the uh, uh, fire department and the police department for bringing the color guard and for the hanging of the colors and for the moment of silence. I think we, I, I know I, I know all of my colleagues joined me in the fact that we recognize that this meeting is being held two days after the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, I hope that uh, everyone got to go to Art Hill in the city and see the 7,852 flags that were uh, beautifully flown uh, to represent all of the folks who were uh, killed on that day, both the victims, the first responders, uh, and then all of the soldiers who have died in the war since then. So we recognize that as we have this meeting tonight, there are 7,852 people who are not joining their families and they sacrifice their lives for all of us. And so we owe a great deal to each and every one of those folks and to their families, and they're all in our thoughts and our prayers. Uh, with that, I would welcome a motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. Hale, seconded by Mr. Clay. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.